Okay, so a couple videos ago you guys met Scotty. He was a barge captain, a tankerman. Well, today I have a real tugboat captain for you, so you don't have to just listen to me all the time. I'm here with my buddy, Captain Chris Murphy. Chris, thank you so much. You're Chris, welcome. Chris and I go way back. There's a story that I don't know if you remember or not, but uh, when my first day coming to work at this company, uh, as with any company, when you you know when you're starting out, you're kind of a little apprehensive. You don't know who to deal with and what to do. You're walking on eggshells and that sort of stuff. Uh, I wasn't thrust into the most receptive. No situation. Not really. The, the good news is that that Chris was there. He was working over on that boat and uh, gave me a lot of support at the time where I needed it the most. So thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So here we are, and Chris. If I understand, no, the viewers don't know this, but I know that uh, I, I or I, I think that you grew up in Massachusetts. Is that's that right? Cape Cod. Yeah, yeah, and and that's something that's special because there are only few of us New Englanders in this <laughs> company. But, uh, anyway, Chris grew up there. Now because of that, can, can you kind of t walk people through, a lot of people have a lot of interest, and you've probably seen some of my other videos where people don't talk just about what they do here, but how they started out. When you were a kid growing up on Cape Cod, you probably had a lot of uh, interest in the water or mm -hmm. access to running, you know, runabouts and that sort of thing. Uh, my first experience was uh, when I was a teenager. I had a job at a seafood restaurant right in the Cape Cod Canal. Oh, wow. And right across the way was a auxiliary Coast Guard station. Nice. And I would see those guys come in 8 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> kind of get everything ready, nice. go out on the boats, come <laughs> back around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, <laughs> get something to eat, play some beach volleyball, and go home. <laughs> and as a kid, as a teenager, I'm like, how could I do that job? <laughs> you know? And I had a couple of uncles who did um, on fishing boats and stuff like that. And, you know, Cape Cod is just surrounded by water, so I see boats everywhere. And I've always loved the water, yeah. you know? So uh, it was just a natural transition for me. Good, good, good. Now, now um, when, you, when, you were, when you were getting out of high school, I... I kind of know where you went to school, so. but when you were getting out of high school, did you apply to many other different colleges, or did you know that the maritime field was where you wanted to go? Uh, maritime field was uh, where I wanted to go. Now, my, my father, being an educator himself, uh, me, oh, he forced me to, uh, yeah, he was a principal okay. and whatnot, but uh, he had said, can't put all your eggs in one basket, yep. so I applied to a couple of uh, IT schools uh -huh. and whatnot, but uh, I ended up applying to the Coast Guard Academy, and that's where I really wanted to go. And, sure. and my father said, if you're going to be in the military, go as an officer. And, um, you know, that kind of transitioned into me pursuing a career on the water. And then um, when that didn't quite pan out, yep. um, I ended up going to SUNY Maritime College. And while I was there, I really fell in love with the maritime industry. It was very interesting to me because... Uh, see, see, I don't know, I always thought you went to Mass Maritime. No, see, I now, I, I, I got accepted there, <laughs> right. and I got recruited there, but it's 15 minutes from my parents' house. Oh, yes, that makes sense. And being a young teenager, sure. I wanted to get out, get out a little bit. <laughs> New York was four hours away, <laughs> that makes near sense the big me. city, so that's where I ended up going. Now, for those of you that don't know this... Um, a lot of people are familiar with things like West Point, you know, where that if you were going to go to the U.S. Military Academy, you'd go to West Point. And the other branches of other services have things. There's Annapolis for yep. the Navy. There's the Air Force uh, yep. Academy. Yep, in Colorado. Colorado. And there's the, the U.S. Merchant Maritime Academy in New York, and there's also the, the Coast Guard Academy mm -hmm. in Groton. Yep, New in, London. In New London. Same Sorry. area. Sorry, it's, 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 Side, but the other side of the river. Yes. <laughs> so, so anyway, it's great to go to these schools, and sometimes even if you have great grades and you have everything that goes well, sometimes politics have a lot to play with them. Um, I, I know I'm not familiar. I, I never applied to any of them, but mm. the story that I've heard is that you can't just apply; that you also need a congressional endorsement. Isn't that correct? It's correct. Um, however, the Coast Guard does not require. Uh huh. So uh, that was one of the other reasons I applied <laughs> there instead of Kings Point nice. because uh, you need appointments and whatnot. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, 
it was easier, yep, yep. you know, but I, I, I really wanted to be a Kosi because I, at the time I didn't understand that those were auxiliary guys. So enlisted. Sure, 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 sure. It wasn't something I was going to be able to do <laughs> right, as an officer. Right, right. And then when I started, you know, after a year or two at Coast Guard Academy, I started realizing, oh, um, so this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Right, right, right. You know, right. and then it turned into kind of like, oh, I'm not really sure if I want to do this now. Good, good call. Um, but then... Well, look, look, now, I don't know if you want to admit this on camera or not, but uh, I certainly well, want to. Well, depends on what you <laughs> ask. <so. laughs> Now that you've been on the other side, you're working over here, aren't you glad you didn't go there? No way? regret whatsoever. <laughs> um, I would have been a class of 2004, and I'm still friends with a lot of the kids that I went to school with at yep. Coast Guard, and they're right around the retirement age yep, now. Yep. And um, they, they constantly ask and say, how, how is it over there? I'm like, <laughs> civilian life is beautiful. <laughs> you know? Um, now, I am jealous. Some of them got stationed in like, Hawaii and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. So, well, you know, yeah. but, you know, uh, I can vacation there. <laughs> I tell some people, you know, there are a lot of people that play basketball, but there's only a few in the NBA. <laughs> yes, that's exactly how it goes. But so, so now you, you you went to school, you transitioned over to SUNY Maritime. You came out with a third mates unlimited. Third well. mates unlimited tonnage license, and we were required to have a degree. I have a degree in marine environmental science. Excellent. No, no, did you no. Not everyone knows this. Um, Danny, my mate, uh, did an interview with me, and we were talking a little bit about it. But um, Cal Maritime didn't have their own ships, uh, and uh, SUNY has the the New York Empire State. The Empire State, yep. right? Right. Can, can, can you kind of just kind of tell people how that works? Because don't you have like a freshman or sophomore cruise, and then a there's three cruises there's three. we have to take. Okay, good. Um, and every summer, it's a, called a summer sea term. Um, ours was 90 days. Mm -hmm. Um, the entire school pretty much goes. Yep. And uh, and this is a full blown ship too. And you see this uh, thing. It's, it's, a, it's a converted it's cargo ship. Right, exactly. It was yeah. a bulk cargo ship. They converted all the holes into birthing areas for yep. all the cadets. Yep. And then we would visit three, four, maybe five different ports in Europe. Yeah, in Europe. Um, yeah. I've been fortunate to see almost all the coastal countries in Europe. Oh, that's so cool. You know, uh, really cool. Estonia, Denmark. Uh, nice. Spain, Portugal, uh, Italy, you know. You know, I'm kind of bringing you off topic, but I'm, I'm curious about this. As a cadet and an American, when you were over in Europe, how were you received? Because you were, you were in your whites, right? Well, we, we would have to, uh, when we arrived, we were fully... Yep. in our white dress, white suit. We wear the same uh, uniform as the Navy does. Okay, so so, it, so it, we it, had it, khakis, khakis yeah. our whites, yep. um, and there were certain ports that were very welcome. Mm -hmm. They knew uh, about us because we visit the same ports pretty much almost every year. Um, some ports were a little more reserved uh -huh. um, because it's, I mean, it's a flood of yeah, 18, <laughs> 19, 20 year old kids <laughs> into their ports into the country. So um, some people were very helpful. Some people were, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is an opportunity. Well, it, it, as you know, you and I have talked before that um, I'm somebody that loves to travel and mm -hmm. I'm always interested to hear how other people are received. You know, uh, one of the things I've been talking to a lot of my, uh, a lot of the audience with in uh, the comments is that only about 70 to 74 percent of the people that watch these videos are from the U.S. Mm -hmm. They're from all over the world, and I have a, a whole bunch. In fact, we're we're in five. I don't know if you guys remember, we're in five different languages now for subtitles. So <laughs> and if 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 you have a link, if you know somebody who wants a, me to put a different language up, let me know, and I'll move that over. I have Indonesian in there, and my Indonesian numbers are going down. And Germany's numbers are coming up, so I might flop over and start putting German subtitles up. You got, you got tugboat uh, <laughs> jargon in there as well? Yeah, not, no, I don't think that's appropriate, probably. <laughs> probably not. You're exactly right. But uh, anyway, I, I've always been interested to see how uh, different people are received in different countries, especially because, um, you know, the it, I was fortunate being young that my parents took us to visit. We have family all over mm -hmm. the world. We went to visit different people. And it seems from my perspective, and you guys know that I don't like to discuss politics or anything like that on the channel. 
However, this is an observation of mine that seems that year, not, not that long ago, I say years ago, but you know, 15 or 20 years ago, you could walk and uh, be viewed in a di much different light than we are today. And uh, that's something that I, um, I'm really grateful to my foreign uh, audience that uh, they're uh, able to listen, you know, uh, watch the channel and be supportive. And uh, Well, the years that we were over there were 2004, 2005, 2006. It was it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. You know, you, you could just travel around. You know, they, they picked us up pretty quick. But, yeah. you know, you could sit down. People would come up and help you out. Nice, nice, um, nice. One quick story, like, when we went to Estonia, which is right next to Poland, the locals there welcomed us so well that they figured out when we were getting our liberty, when it was off. <laughs> they figured out who had overnight passes, and a lot of families were inviting us to their own. Oh, homes, that's so neat! Cooking us dinners, oh, meals. Oh, that's beautiful. That, 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 those know, are the stories I love to hear. It, it was amazing because that's really cool. We didn't expect that kind of reception, yeah. and when it happened, it was just oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, that's you know? great. And and for people that age too, when you're a mm -hmm. kid, to be away from home and feel like well, there was a lot of kids who had reservations about it, but. When we had a couple of kids go and they had a great experience, it was like everyone was lined up right at the pier saying, uh, uh, I'd like to have a cooked meal <laughs> at home, you know. That's so cool. It's a so. good deal. So, so when you got out of school, did you go shipping at all or did you come right to tugboats? I uh, graduated in January of 06 and I went and joined MMP, Masters, mm -hmm. made some pilots. Uh, that's a union. The, that's a union. Um, I had a friend who graduated a year before, and he had an apartment in Staten Island, mm -hmm. which is where one of the union halls is. And uh, I went for three months to get a shipping job, and uh, it was very difficult at the time. Sure. There was a very small amount of openings at the time. And I tried for three months, and I couldn't get a shipping job. And uh, one of the stories that, that sticks with me, and the reason why I left, was that uh, it's frowned upon, but I had a call from a ship saying, hey, we're on the west coast, it's coming in at night, so it'll be posted in the east coast first for a third mate's job. <laughs> that day I showed up, a box of donuts, you know, a box of Joe, and the, <laughs> the lady behind the desk like, you seem really perked up. And I was like, yep, I have a good feeling today. <laughs> and the minute she got that call and posted it up, this gentleman walked in with a sea bag, and he had a, uh, a book, which is the, the higher up in the union. So <laughs> everything is based is that, on is that seniority. Seniority, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, he was a chief mate's license, and he looked at me, picked up the job, and he said, "Good luck, kid." <laughs> Walked out. I was I was in tears, and I looked at the lady. I said, "I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to uh, ask for your donuts." I was like, I, "I was gonna have to figure something out," <laughs> and I grabbed a couple donuts and I walked out. And uh, at the time, I was so disappointed because a lot of my friends had joined sure. and got shipping jobs and uh, I remember I had a pile of business cards at graduation and uh, I literally just kind of went into my shoe box picked the first card up and it was a tugboat company and I was like I need the money I need to start working you know and uh, made a phone call a week later I was on a boat Wow, and, and, and is that the company where you work for today? That's the same that's company amazing. That's, that's 14 amazing. years ago. Wow, that's I've great. I've never worked for anybody else. That's, that's really, really cool. Now, now, Chris has done something for a long time that I used to do, um, where some of you that might remember me saying before, um, when I came to this company, I, I think they hired me because I did what we called wire work, where I'd be towing barges up and down, the, what we call up and down the beach means me that we're not in the harbor. It doesn't mean the beach mm. like you guys think. But anyway, so Chris, I might be wrong, please correct me, but as far as I could tell from the orders that I've seen you've been doing for like the last eight years or ten years, you've just been in the Gulf getting your butt kicked like all the time, right? Nope. Um, and when I say his butt kick, I'm saying that when you're in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico and it starts to blow, a, there's, no, boat. there's nowhere to go. Nope. <laughs> uh, we went down there. I had just gotten freshly uh, turned loose as mate. Yep. And when I graduated from the school, we were trained for shipping. Right, 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 right. right. I didn't know anything. Well, and Danny talked about that as well. Nope, that, that and Danny, I had to Danny learn. said that they come over here and it, it, it's a I new got thing. I hired as a deckhand. Even though I had a third mate's on a little yep. tonnage license, I learned my way up. I uh, went through all of the training and and 
things that uh, I needed to learn. And then I got my mate's job on a brand new boat that came out, brand new mate that was turned into captain. We went down there for the BP yeah, incident. Yeah. Oh yeah, for, for, for the, that, that was the, the Horizon. The yeah, and uh, we went down there to help out. And then the company said, hey, we're gonna keep you down there. And then eight years later, <laughs> I finally got the call to come back up <laughs> to the East Coast. So you put your time in <laughs> avoiding hurricanes and, and you know uh, going around weather systems and going through platform areas. No, I learned a lot down there. I can no, tell you that. No, we have we have a whole bunch of viewers that I see because of reading the comments that are that that are from the Mississippi area. Mm -hmm. And I told them that I used to be on that contract going from Tampa up to. Uh, Baton Rouge. Yep. But 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 that was just a short thing. You you've been doing that for almost uh, eight years, right? right. I mean, we started off doing Pascagoula. Yep. To Tampa, and then Mississippi River, and then to Tampa, and then to Jacksonville, and then we went to Texas. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Lake Charles. Yep. Yeah. Corpus Christi. Mm. I was all down that coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, good deal. Did you uh? Did you ever get called? I, I always think it's funny because uh, some people, when they watch the videos, mm -hmm. they don't understand why we push barges backwards, like our 50s backwards. And uh, I remember being in the mouth of the Mississippi waiting for the fog to lift, and a pilot was going to meet us on the inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a. When, when they're waiting for the fog to lift, there'll be a whole bunch of boats. Everybody's <laughs> waiting, and you're trying to get ahead of everybody else because whoa, whoever the first one there is going to set the pace mm -hmm. for everyone else. Well, anyway, there's what we call a heave, and that means that that, that it's it's not windy or anything, but there's a the, the, there's a good three or four heave, foot very ground exact. swell. Yeah. And, and so because of that. I've been talking in my other videos about the difference between an ATB and, and a uh, conventional tug that has push gear and how an ATB can take the swells and after a couple feet we, our push gear can't handle that. So for me to get in the river just as the fog is starting to lift, um, I'd have to get through this spot and I'd probably break everything out. So I, this was not a big deal for me, the barge was light, we were going mm -hmm. to load and so I said, you know, uh, yeah, I've done this a million times with other uh, another company. I'll just flip on the barge, what we call, what we call heads and because we're towing it at this point. So I, I round up on the barge and we're heads and tails. We make up on it with soft lines. And what's when we say soft lines, it's because they stretch. Mm -hmm. So as the barge stays static because it's such a big piece of metal and the tug goes up and down, the, the lines stretch, stretch. Back, back, yeah. back and forth. So I'm running it in. And I get into the river and the pilot comes on board and as he's coming up, the fog lifts and like 10 different boats call me and say, hey, you know you're going backwards, backwards right? Yeah. No one, did you get that call as well? I, I've heard that and uh, <laughs> I've also heard, uh, what kind of boat is that? Is that a wire boat? We haven't seen one of those in 20 years. What are you doing down here? <laughs> oh, too fun, too fun. So, so since you've been in the industry, have you seen the in, uh, obviously the industry is constantly evolving and changing mm -hmm. as the oil prices change mm -hmm. and labor changes and all this sort of stuff. But as how what kind of things have affected you as far as change in being from the point of being a captain? What do you see that has changed for you, or has it remained relatively constant? I mean, it's been pretty steady and constant, but you know. Um, the needs of the oil companies telling mm -hmm. us what kind of uh, units they need to move products and yep. stuff like that has obviously impacted the company we work for sure. to build bigger units. Sure. And uh, but steadily, wire boats in the Northeast is very normal. Yep. Common yep. to see. Mm -hmm. do, do you do you find that the people that are coming into the industry are are more of a and I, I don't know if this happened so much in the last 10 years as it does in the last 20 or so, but, um, and, and it might just be because I'm turning into my father every day. <laughs> but I think that, uh, sometimes I think that some of the, I feel as though we as a fleet, and I don't mean our company, I mean the entire tugboating industry is a much more professional fleet than it may have been years ago. And uh, that, I'm not saying it's better, I'm mm -hmm. just saying that, 
Um, you know, of course, years ago there were no drug testing, and people had, you know, everyone always asks, do we have, do sailors have girlfriends in every port? And God, don't I wish that was true. My wife still <laughs> says it. <laughs> anyway, the, we, the, the funny thing is, we're not even allowed off the boat. We can't, we can literally not even get off the boat. So, so, and, um, but because of that, um, it, it seems as though things are, are from my perspective, and I don't know if, it, you don't have to agree with me, uh, but if, if this rings true, let me know. Sometimes I think that the caliber of people or the perceptions that people have of what the industry is, mm -hmm. where maybe it was a job that your Uncle Jerry got you before. Right, right. Now it's something that people go to school and they go and get, and they have to have licenses, and they have to take drug tests and background yep. and be fingerprinted and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's definitely become a more, I guess, trade. Yeah, sure, you sure. You know, learning yeah, a yeah, trade yeah, and whatnot. And when I first started back in 06, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it was one of those, like, Hey, I, I have this uh, uncle or right, I have this right. nephew that's right. uh, interested in coming to work. Well, what's his experience level? Uh, he's never been on a boat. Right. No worries. We'll train right. him up. Right. But now it's like uh, more of how long have you been in the industry? Right. What's your training level? Sure. Do you have these certifications? And I think some of that is driven not so much by the company, but by the company trying oh, to appeal to the customers. Wide. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So in other words, the people that we're moving the product for mm -hmm. want to see a higher level of people right. with all the right. All the oil companies have been, have been uh, requiring exactly more training for people and more certifications. So good deal. So. Uh, are you uh, you're working in the Northeast now? Uh, obviously, I was I was gonna yep. I was thinking I should ask you if that's where you see yourself in the future, but I realized that if you ask me that, neither one of us no, have no, any no. idea. We go where the company tells us to go. We, when the contracts change, we change. Yep, right? Absolutely, <laughs> and uh, I enjoy being in the Northeast. Good, you know it's a lot better. I've I've done my times. And, and you're a father so. now? And so yeah, it's a two-year-old. Two-year-old dog. When, so. when you're in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, and it's a day before crew change, and you've got a five-day run that you've got to go, mm -hmm. and, and the weather window is open, and you've got to go, you've got to go. And they're not going to send a helicopter out to get you. You're just going to miss your crew change, and you're going to have to crew change late, and it's a disaster. Yep. Raises havoc with uh, the family life. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, but, like but now you're here. Now so I'm here, and, and it's great. 15 minutes from getting off the boat, <laughs> works out great. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming and sharing some stories with us. And uh, uh, my, my audience loves to meet people, and uh, you're one of the good guys. I think this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Oh, thank you you're so much. You're doing a great Chris. job. Thank you, thank you. You know, <laughs> I was telling Chris before that one of the biggest surprises I have was that <laughs> It's not too hard to imagine that a lot of tough, uh, a lot of tugboat guys are kind of rough around the edges, and we, we you gotta have thick skin. We like to poke fun of people and that sort of stuff. And I figured, oh my God, I'm gonna be fine with the general public, but my, but the the rest of the fleet are gonna they're they're gonna destroy me. And I have to say, <laughs> everyone on the fleet's been really supportive, and it's been really cool. So, anyway, thank you for being a part of it, and. Uh, Thank you guys for watching and uh, thank you for uh, subscribing. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, and Gmail, all at Tim B and C. We have merchandise down below and, <laughs> oh yeah, look at that, I forgot, I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> and uh, a special thanks to my patrons, if you, uh, they're the people that actually pay money every month. You can start with as little as $2 a month and there you can go to patreon.com, become a patron and uh, help out the cause. If you don't want to do that, it's totally fine. Just watching, liking and subscribing helps out just as well too. So well, you should do it. You should do it. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much. No I really appreciate it. Thank All you. Right, very